Supporting this floor, don't we? So we do that. <laughs> yeah. If you think we should do it, go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the frame coming up from one side of the door. That's the header over the top. So we can see the floor joists left and right there. Uh, the wall actually comes up with a header rail between. Uh, it's not taking any weight of the joists above and runs parallel with the wall. So it's safe to come out. this um, material finish with an insulator underneath which um, is quite common out here I was worried about losing this deep set coving. Isn't that beautiful? I really wanted to keep that. And the worry that I had was as we were taking the block out, um, we didn't want to damage any of the coving above that. So what I did was I cut in as far as I could, chiseled by hand, the block away, just a line immediately underneath that coving. So far, we haven't damaged any of it, and obviously we've got this section to go, this section to go. Frame here goes up uh, into, uh, continues all the way up um, into the void between the floors, and there's a noggin which that uh, the top of this uh, timber upright sits on. And that noggin just stops the top of that drifting around, ties it all in nicely. Uh, we're cutting the top of the frame away because I don't want to interfere with that nogging I spoke about up under the floor means taking more floorboards up which I don't want to do um, and then the bottom of the frame unfortunately is just screwed uh, sorry nailed I hate nails I use nails extensively over here that's just nailed into the floor so we take that frame off then I put a strap across it uh, to um, save the strength of that joint, which is quite nice, quite a nice pegged, uh, pegged joint. So I just nail a strap across there to give it some strength. Then it goes into storage because we're using these doors again in the Susol project down below. So 
So very pleased with that. We've got a tiny bit of damage just there, which was an old nail head, which has come back through this way and, and blown out some of the plaster and also uh, just the filling over the old nails. I need to cap that radiator, but I don't have any, I don't have any fittings the right size. We can't buy any. So that's going to be interesting. And I'm just chasing out the cable runs at the moment so we can make those safe. It was actually rewired not so long ago, about 10 years ago, 15 years ago, it was rewired. So we obviously want to reuse as much of this as possible. We've been really, really lucky. Just no damage at all. So the idea is what we'll do is we'll build a box we're going to put another plywood, uh, sorry, not a uh, plasterboard ceiling coming up, but uh, just build a little bit of bo a box around that to give that some depth. So this is the wooden fire surround. It's far too big for this project, uh, but it's well made. So we're going to remove it carefully and reuse this on another project later. We found this underneath. Now we think that that was a marble fireplace originally. And in the barns, we found an old marble fireplace. So we're gonna have a look. We're gonna bring one section up and see if it fits. But this is where we uh, hid our fireplace. When we bought the house, there was a few things in the barns and the, bar the sellers were busy taking things out of the house and selling them. So we, we security hid the fireplace. It's this one here, which we looked at yesterday. And there's the other bits to it there. So we're just gonna see if we can make that one fit. Took us through it. But it's the right height. Okay, so we've dry fitted the fire surround, marked everything up, and we had to do some modifications. This didn't come from this room. This fireplace is a bit smaller. So we've just had to put, the, put some fire bricks in across the top to uh, bond to the top of the mantelpiece there. Also done some repairs at the bottom and leveled that off uh, so we got a nice uh, level area for the feet.
Lovely. So here what we're going to do is we're going to leave these um, flowers and the bars gold. Now I'm just going to paint in all of the uh, black parts in between and the round. So we just, we just have the gold highlighting the black. So what's the job, Miss Anna? The accident. No, health and safety at work. What have we got? We built some... We're putting ceiling up. Putting some ceiling up, haven't we? Yeah. So... Um, we've. Really yeah, it's a high ceiling, isn't it? Yeah. And we've made some stays, some plasterboard stays to help us.
So we have the first coat of undercoat on and naturally that has shown some imperfections uh, that I need to sort out but only minor and we're now uh, just boxing in this cornice um, so what I've done is I've just done a, a, a little strip along here to see what it would look like because uh, I wanted uh, that detail from there to there to have a bit of depth uh, before it joined this room otherwise it would look odd if it was just a, a small piece of plaster coming down so what we've been doing is just oh, it's got a bit out of focus is just framing up uh, framing up this ready for the plaster so I'm going to put the uh, extra pieces of uh, plaster on this now uh, and I've had to leave that end piece uninsulated and unboarded and unbattened right now because uh, I'm waiting on some cabling. I need to obviously terminate this cable. It's a combination of uh, uh, live feeds and also uh, there's two switch, two switch feeds coming down to power the spotlight. So uh, that, needs, that, that needs to be terminated in that box. And then what we've got to do is then run a longer section of this uh, from this floor here underneath that void and then up that wall, which is nicely chased out. That's where the old brickwork tied into the wall. Uh, then it needs to go up into that void and then along and back into the junction box. And I'm gonna leave the junction boxes. This one I've already relocated because I had enough cable for it. Uh, but this one I need some different color um, uh, flex and I want to make sure all the color coding remains uh, the same. So I've got to wait for that, it's on order and everything's taking a bit longer. So I'm going to uh, just box in plaster up to uh, that stage. And then after that, we're gonna give another coat to uh, the wall, the ceiling, but I'm very happy. It's, um, uh, it's come out very, very nicely. It's my first ceiling. So we're quite pleased with that. Hello, how hot is it today? It's really hot up here, which is good because it means the insulation is working. Yeah. <laughs> we put dirty great thick insulation up in the um, in the void, as you know, and all the heat seems to be coming up here. But uh, the other problem we've got is I've got no plasterboard corners, which would give us a lovely sharp metal edge on all these. I'm having to do it all by hand, so this side of, we have got two rolls of mesh. We've been using mesh, plastering over everything, and then hand sanding the curves and the corners in afterwards. And then, but it looks professional. Right. Yes, it does. It will be fine for the project, won't it, sweetheart? What do you think? There's a master um, ceiling putter up there, a master plasterer. I don't think so. Yes, yes you are. Yeah. A master chicken chateau roofer. <laughs> He's a roofer! <laughs> He's a roofer! Yeah. Uh, what else? Oh, master lover. Oh, well, that goes without saying, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs>